the first um, 35, um, Air Finale got the most votes, then followed by Jack Dale. Feminism is a social, political, and economic philosophy. It is mostly about the battle between the working class and the ownership class, and favors communism and socialism over capitalism. The party cannot, or the party's ideology and its belief cannot be divorced from the reality of the country, the reality of the world, and the reality of our own membership. Gail Teixeira, Nigel Darmlal, Colin Kroll, Kwame McCoy, in that order. And argues for a worker revolution to overturn capitalism in favor of communism. Marxism hypothesizes that the struggle between social classes, specifically between the bourgeoisie, or capitalists, and the proletariat, or workers, defines economic relations in a capitalist economy and will inevitably lead to revolutionary communism. Now the world has moved on from the Cold War era, from the era of isms. So in that sense, we are bringing our constitution more in line with the prevailing um, ideology in the world. Those who are candidate members in that order, um, in this order, Indar, Indar Deodat, Minister Indar Deodat, May Thomas, Jason Abdullah, Andrew Forsyth, and Ryan, Ryan Peters. These are the four, there are five candidate members who will be sitting at the central committee of the party, but um, don't have the right to vote. Third, to maximize profits, business owners have an incentive to get the most work out of their laborers while paying them the lowest possible wages. This creates an unfair imbalance between owners and laborers whose work the owners exploit for their own gain. Ideologies or philosophies are, dri or are guided by those without having to mention an ism behind them. They're characterized by a set of policies that are pro-poor and pro-working class, but at the same time don't contradict the creation of wealth by the private sector. And that is really the reality of Guyana today. Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. We turn the five can vote, and they will then elect a cent uh, an executive committee of the party. The central committee will then also elect the general secretary of the party and the other officers, the executive secretary of the party, the international secretary of the party, the finance secretary of the party, etc. So when that meeting is held later this week, then the, the, all the, the general secretary and all of the others will be elected at that meeting. I'm going to share with you the number of votes that each person who got in to the Central Committee received from the Congress. The first um, 35, um, Air Finale got the most votes, then followed by Jack Dale, then the Executive Secretary of the Party, Zulfikar Mustafa, um, then Vikram Bharat, Gail Teixeira, Nigel Darmlal, Colin Kroll, Kwame McCoy, in that order, Nige uh, Anil Nandalal, Pauline Sukai, Sham Nocta, Ricky Ramraj, Jennifer Westford, Neil Kumar, Anand Pasad, Frank Anthony, Sarah Brown, Zamal Hussein, Faisal Jafar Ali, Faisal Jafar Ali, Brian Ali Cock, Vindy Pasad, Vindy Pasad, Charles Ramson, Carl Singh, Paul Chung, Claire Singh, Donald Ramatar, um, Omis Odiet, Brent Null Ashley, Dharam Kumar Siraj, Barry Ramsaran, Sheikh Mohammed Inshan Ayub, Vikash Ram Kisun, Says Conrad, Clement Rohi, Indrani Chandapal. That's in the 
Central Committee. Well, where are the candidates? Who got in now? So these are the 35 that got their most votes in that order. There are 35 for the full Central Committee. I don't know. Yes. The five persons who are candidate members in that order, um, in this order, in their in Dar Deodat, Minister in Dar Deodat, May Thomas, Jason Abdullah, Andrew Forsyth, and Ryan Ryan Peters. These are the four, their five candidate members who will be sitting at the Central Committee of the party, but um, don't have the right to vote at this, uh, this election. So that's the list of people that will um, will comprise the new Central Committee of the People's Progressive Party. Uh, so here, oh, you got it now, right? So, so these are the, the two lists that you have with the number of votes, how many each each person got here. One love, Delta 9 family, welcome back to the flight. Now, we heard from the entire presentation that was given at the Congress, what were gonna be some of the adjustments? What was gonna be some of the changes? What was gonna be some of the new, or not entirely new, but let's just say reconstructed, allegedly, political views that's gonna be held and that's gonna be at the fulcrum of the political wheel in the PPP. We heard some of the things that are going to be changed. We hear now that everybody is welcome. Everybody could come in. You know, you don't have to this particular way, that particular way. You don't have to hold this ideology. You're welcoming everybody in. But they're welcoming everybody into the party. You can come in, but not as a voter. You can't come in as a voter. You can't come in and feel like you can not say to what's going on in certain aspects when it comes down to the running of the main part of the party, when it comes down to the general running of the party, the real power in the party, certain people will never have a voting power as to what is done. And that is clearly said, and that's clearly what's gonna be the case moving forward. So we need to see who is these non-voting members and how these non-voting members move around in the party. If they just sit in that particular place and they don't move forward, it can be considered to be a progressive party because if these people just sitting in this position with no power and never put themselves or never make some type of arm, when it comes down to moving forward in the party, if these non-voting members never move up, to a voting position and if most of them remain in this non-voting position and most of them are melanin dominant individuals then we got to see it for what it is but if it's not like that then it's definitely progressive and if it's not like that to where we see in real diversity and real diversity in the places where the power is held then we know that there is real change and all is not the same allegedly like it was before. Now we could have a conversation about this in the comment. What are your views on these points that I just made and some of the points that was made by the Vice President in his presentation that we just heard? And as we move forward and we realize the popularity, the popularity of Nigel Dharam Lal, we can realize allegedly apparently he might be headed back into parliament what do you guys think about that is that something good or something bad when it comes down for the perspective of the opposition or the perspective of the party of which he is a member and and if we're to consider this as well knowing that we would have heard many times before persons in the opposition and persons that are a part of the political uh, face of Guyana mention this thing of, oh, they are a Marxist regime. They practice Marxism X, Y, and Z. Now we hear 
directly from the vice president, one of the high ranking members of that party, he steps forward and he, we will no longer hold this as one of our premise in our party. This will no longer be one of the fulcrums by which we operate. When we're talking about that, we're talking about Marxism. Now, a lot of persons might know what Marxism is already, and some of us might need a quick rebrusher so that we come a little bit more sharp and up yourself, you know what I'm saying, bringing back certain information we would have studied before on this particular topic. Whichever place you find yourself, check out this video that's coming up right after P.P. Javio gives us the information on the fact that the PPP will no longer be using Marxism. There's a video right there giving us a brief, info, some very powerful information in a brief way, I should say, on Marxism. And guess what? Go to that channel and subscribe to that page. Guess why? Because you're going to find a lot of good content there, illustrated in that same way. And if you're into understanding political jargon and the way the politics really work in not just Guyana, but all over the world because everything is politics. Guess what? That would be a great page for you to subscribe to. And when you go there, tell him Delta 9 Media send you. One love. We can get into the content right now from the VP. Ready? Do remember to hit that like button. Hit that like button and boost this in the algorithm. Hit that like button. And while you're there, subscribe so that you'll stay updated with everything, everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. One love. It's not just international that we are looking at. But what we, we were saying, that if you look at our membership of the party, the party cannot or the party's ideology and its belief cannot be divorced from the reality of the country, the reality of the world, and the reality of our own membership. Now, the world has moved on from the Cold War era, from the era of isms. So in that sense, we are bringing our constitution more in line with the prevailing um, ideology in the world, where you do have parties and countries that practice or, or working class ideologies or philosophies or, or are guided by those without having to mention an ism behind them. They're characterized by a set of policies that are pro-poor and pro-working class, but at the same time don't contradict the creation of wealth by the private sector. And that is really the reality of Guyana today. If you, you talk to our membership, many who come, came in there never they didn't even know about Marxism-Leninism, members of the party. Many people, young people you talk to today, um, they don't know about that. And then the constitution of the party said we had to teach them about Marxism-Leninism instead of teaching them about our own history, our own struggles, our own um, achievements so that they can propagate the party. So what we have done, yes, the removal of this would allow us to focus on what is real, what is, so that we don't, we're not distracted by that debate, which our critics and naysayers often say, oh, this is a fossilized party. It professes to an ideology that no longer has national or global significance or relevance. And so the answer is yes, but it's a no more of a nuance yes. It, it, it helps us to bring our party more in, in to reality or closer to the belief of our membership, our country, what we are practicing, and the, and the global reality. To support more simple and objective videos on topics that matter. In this video, we'll take a look at the basics of what you should know about Marxism. First, what is Marxism? Marxism is a social, political, and economic philosophy 
it is mostly about the battle between the working class and the ownership class, and favors communism and socialism over capitalism. Marxism was first publicly formulated in 1848 in the pamphlet The Communist Manifesto by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, which lays out the theory of class struggle and revolution. It inspects the effects of capitalism on labor, productivity, and economic development, and argues for a worker revolution to overturn capitalism in favor of communism. Marxism hypothesizes that the struggle between social classes, specifically between the bourgeoisie, or capitalists, and the proletariat, or workers, defines economic relations in a capitalist economy and will inevitably lead to revolutionary communism. Marx's class theory portrays capitalism as one step in the historical progression of economic systems that follow one another in a natural sequence by vast and personal forces of history that happen due to the behavior and conflict among social classes. According to Marx, every society is divided into social classes, whose members have more in common with one another than with members of other social classes. The following is the basis of Marx's theories of how class conflict would play out in a capitalist system. First, in a capitalist society, there are two classes, the bourgeoisie or business owners who control the means of production, and the proletariat or workers whose labor transforms raw commodities into valuable economic goods. Second, ordinary laborers who do not own the means of production, such as factories, buildings, and materials, have little power in the capitalist economic system. Workers are also readily replaceable in periods of high unemployment, further devaluing their perceived worth. Third, to maximize profits, business owners have an incentive to get the most work out of their laborers while paying them the lowest possible wages. This creates an unfair imbalance between owners and laborers, whose work the owners exploit for their own gain. Fourth, because workers have little personal stake in the process of production, Marx believed that they would become alienated from it, as well as from their own humanity, and turn resentful toward business owners. Fifth, the bourgeoisie also employs social institutions, including government, media, academia, organized religion, and banking and financial systems, as tools and weapons against the proletariat with the goal of maintaining their position of power and privilege. Lastly, the inherent inequalities and exploitative economic relations between these two classes will lead to a revolution in which the working class rebels against the bourgeoisie, takes control of the means of production, and abolishes capitalism. Buying shares in Dubai, a company in Dubai, to work on a joint venture with another company to come here to buy the GPL. I am not one of those persons. I am not one of those persons. So they're running down GPL to the point where, this, where the people of this country will get 